Next, I'm going to draw a sphere. And a sphere is uh, like a ball. It's round every way you turn it. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle. Now with the rest of these I can think about it and imagine that it is coming off of the page and it looks three-dimensional. But if I draw a sphere just like this, like a circle, it doesn't look three-dimensional. So I'm going to add a little bit of shading to it to make it look more like a ball that's coming off the page. So I have to think of one side as being brighter, like light is shining on it, and one side being dark. So I take my pencil and shade one side of it. I just press lightly with my pencil. And notice that when you have a sphere and it looks round like a ball, the shading is also going to look round. So curve your shading so it's kind of thin right here, thicker here, and thin right here. And if you feel very confident about your shading skills, you can make it a little bit darker on the side that's darkest. And then it really starts to pop out at you. Okay, so here are our five basic forms. We have cube, pyramid, cone, cylinder, and sphere. Now, I want you to turn to the person next to you and tell them what the five different basic forms we just learned about are, and also try to describe what they look like. It should be on your paper. And if you haven't written the names of the different kinds of forms, go ahead and write those as well. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Go! Okay, and time is up. Okay, so we have our cube, pyramid, cone, cylinder and sphere. Okay, I hope you learned a little bit about what those are and they're all different kinds of forms. Now, we are going to be making our drawing on the other side. So this is the back side of our paper. Turn it over and we're going to make a drawing that doesn't look exactly like this, but kind of because it's going to have some things in it that are similar. The artist here is Paul Cezanne. And Paul Cezanne made all these different kinds of still life pictures of fruit. A lot of times it was on a table with fabric and it might have a jug or a vase or something else in the picture as well. And in this still life you can see a kind of form. There's a lot of that kind of form in this picture. I'm going to point to it. What kind of form is this class? That's right. You got it. It looks like a sphere. And you can see where it's lighter, medium, and darker. That is the value, the light, medium, and dark. And the form was the sphere. Okay, we're first going to sketch out our picture. And we're going to have two pieces of fruit in it and also a plate and a table. You can make your fruit a little bit different than mine. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. I'm going to start with a pear. And a pear is thinner at the top and bigger at the bottom. I'm going to start kind of in the middle of my paper, a little bit off to the left, and lightly draw a curved line. Then I'm going to make it curve out and 
curve down and then connect it at the bottom. Okay, your pear shape doesn't have to look exactly like this one because Pears have different kinds of shape. Some are thinner, some are wider, some have more of a bump at the top or less of a bump at the top. Some are even actually really round, like a sphere. And I'll put a little stem on the top. Just give it a couple of lines so it has a thickness to it. Next, I'm going to add one more uh, shape over here, one more form over here, and this time I'm going to make it round so that it is a sphere. Okay, remember to sketch lightly so that when you add your oil pastels later on that it can cover up the lines. Okay, my two pieces of fruit are sitting on a plate. So I'm going to go from the left side of my fruit here and make a curved line that comes down for one side of the plate. And I imagine this line is continuing behind the fruit and it curves on the other side for the other side of my plate. Okay, now the fruit is on a plate, the plate is on a table. So in the back, I'm going to make a straight line for where the table ends. Then I imagine that the table continues, so I have to do the same thing I did with the plate. I go behind the fruit to the other side and make a straight line that goes to the other side of my paper. All right, we are ready to add value, our light and dark values to our fruit. Think about the color you want to choose for your fruit. Your color for your fruit does not have to be the same as mine. It could be a piece of yellow fruit, green fruit, red fruit, if you really want to, you could even make it blue fruit, although I don't think that either of these are blueberries. It could be a gigantic blueberry, right? Now I'm going to take my color, whichever color I'm choosing to start off with, and lightly color in my first piece of fruit. And the reason why I say lightly is because if you color it in really thick right away, you won't be able to add the values. Okay, so I can still see some white on my paper, and that's the way I want it right now. I've just colored it in lightly. Then I want to think about where the light part of my fruit is. Now if I have sunlight or a light bulb that's shining down on my fruit, normally that light is coming from above, so the light will touch the top part of the fruit. That means the top part of my fruit will have a lighter value to it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use something that is lighter. For example, I know that yellow is lighter than green or white is lighter than green. I'm actually going to use both because white is the lightest color I'm going to use that on the part that I think should be the very lightest. Okay, so I start to blend it together so that it mixes with my green.
Okay, next, for the part that I think is still pretty light, I'm going to add a little yellow to it. And I can touch part of the area that has white on it as well, so that it mixes together. Instead of being like rainbow stripes, I want it to blend together, to go from light to dark. I'm just adding a little bit more here so that it doesn't look like I have a stripe of white and a stripe of yellow. Okay, next, I want to show dark value. So I'm going to add something at the bottom because if I have light shining down from the top, here's the lightest part, here's medium, then underneath on the bottom of the fruit, that's where the darkest part would be. One way to make something darker or make it look brown is to add the opposite color. The opposite color of green is red. So I'm going to get my red color. And if you have a piece of um, yellow fruit, the opposite of yellow would be purple. If you have a orange fruit, the opposite of orange is blue. Okay, remember the sphere on the other side of the page, it's round, and so is this piece of fruit. So when I shade, I'm not going to shade a stripe like this. I'm going to shade it round. Okay. 